between a shepherd and his flock. I want you to keep in mind when we're talking about a shepherd, we're talking about some of the characteristics of God. So when we're talking about the flock, right, we're talking about us. When we're talking about the flock, we ain't talking about this ambivalent group of people. We're talking about us. Let's, let's talk about the shepherd a little bit. The social status of shepherds. The shepherd was considered to be a part of the lowest rung of people they were on the lowest rung of the social ladder in their time. Shepherds were considered on par with them, with, with publicans, with tax collectors, with, with dung sweepers, animal poop, manure. They were not highly regarded and revered in their day. Doesn't it sound a lot like God said he made of himself no reputation, but came in the form of a servant? This great and mighty, powerful God represents himself as, but I am a shepherd. In other words, status is not as important as many of us sometimes think it is. Shepherds were often the youngest son. Let's turn to 1 Samuel 16 and let's look at verse number 11. So when Samuel showed up to Jesse's house, Jesse realized, oh, Samuel's here to anoint the next king. Jesse rather started parading all of his sons in front of, of, of Samuel, starting with the oldest. And Samuel said to Jesse, well, God has rejected all of these. Are these all your sons? Did I miss here, God? I'm pretty sure he said it was going to come from your family. Are these all your sons? Are here all your children? And he said, there remaineth one, the youngest, but behold, he keepeth the what? And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till they come hither. David before he was anointed to be king of Israel, was the youngest son of Jesse serving as a shepherd, tending the sheep. What were some of the roles and responsibilities of a shepherd? The shepherd's job was to protect his flock. One of the roles and responsibilities of the shepherd was to, was to guide them, to lead them to good places to feed. If the sheep were not fed good food, they would become malnourished. So what did shepherds use? What was in their tool bag, tools of the trade, as it were? So a shepherd would have a rod. Your rod and your staff, they bring you comfort. Because if you have your rod, then I know that you can protect me from invaders. I know that you can defend me against predators that may try to come and harm me and destroy me. The rod was also used as an instrument to count the sheep. They would also carry a staff. And many shepherds, not all, but many shepherds on the end of that staff is what's called a shepherd's crook, which was this little loop thing on it. And they would use that sometimes to help sheep that were cast down. So a sheep, when its wool gets really heavy and thick, it can get out of balance and it can fall over on its back. And the weight of the wool is so heavy that it can't get itself back on its feet. 
And so the shepherd would then use the crook, the crooked end of his staff to lift the sheep up and help it to get on its feet to keep going. They also carried a, a bag or a sling. And you remember that David used a sling to slay Goliath. Those days, a sling was usually made of a leather uh, type of material that had string attached to it. And a skilled one, a skilled shepherd could take a stone or a rock and put it inside the pouch. They would swing it around and at the right time, let it go and it would fling that rock. And sometimes what the shepherd would do is they could see a wolf in the distance. And then so they would get a stone and they put in their sling and they'll swing it around and, and fling it at the wolf to scare the wolf off and to scatter. It's like a, a warning shot across the bow. Don't come any closer. And sometimes God even uses his sling to, to ward off the enemy. Before they get close, he uses a sling. Yep, don't, don't mess with that one. That one's mine. Because the shepherd had this responsibility and cared for his sheep, to protect the sheep and, and to keep them, they would build this thing called a sheepfold. And at the end of the day, they would take the sheep and they would herd them into these gathering, these collection areas. And, and then they would close the door to make sure that once the sheep got in, that they, they couldn't escape in the night and that predators couldn't come in as well. So as the sheep were coming in, the shepherd would stand there and, and with his rod, he would count the sheep to make sure that all the sheep were there. And if he got to 99 and realized that one of his sheep were missing, he would close the door to the sheepfold to make sure that the sheep were safe and secure. And then he would wander out to go find out where's this other sheep that's missing. Y'all remember the parable of the lost sheep? That's what he's talking about. It's not that he would leave and abandon the 99. He would make sure that they were secure and corralled, but then he would go out looking for that one. Let's talk about his flock now. We've talked a little bit about the shepherd. Let's talk a little bit about his flock. His flock is made up predominantly, primarily of sheep, but there are some goats. Let's talk a little bit about the differences between a sheep and a goat. It's important that we understand some of these differences so, so that we can identify. And in some cases, when, when, when our character is identified with one, we should be like, mm, I'm not so sure that's a good thing. That's something for me to work on. Goats like to hang out on the slopes on Rocky Mountain. So you, you've seen the most, they're, the goats. They're on hillsides, they're on rocky terrain and stuff like that. Uh, you, you ain't gonna see no sheep up there. Sheep don't like danger. Sheep don't like that, that kind of uh, topography. You will find sheep in valleys, in flat lands, in flat plains. We talked a little bit about their diet. Sheep like grass and they like tender grass, that, that delicate green grass. Goats don't do that. They're eating leaves off of trees. They're eating bushes and shrubs and, and things of that nature. So their, their diet is different. Sheep are a little more finicky. Sheep are a little pickier about what they'll eat. Goats will eat almost anything. Just saying. Goats are uh, bolder, more venturesome. They tend to wander uh, and get away more. They're more playful. They're more apt to, to go to dangerous places. They're more apt to be headstrong and stubborn. Sheep have a strong tendency to group up or flock together. Now, there's both strengths and weaknesses to this. What will often happen is that within these flocks, they'll begin to copy the behavior of those around them. So if one sheep in the group begins to wander and drift off track, then guess what happens with all the other sheep in that group? It's cool that we're all together. It's cool that we, we find community. There's a strength and a value to us becoming together because we can find protection and safety amongst one another. We can find support and encouragement amongst one another. But it's also important that we make sure that, that if we're following in that group, that we're following as they are following Christ. Goats tend to be more curious, easily distracted, and lured away. It's easy for individuals to wander away. Very, very rarely will you get a sheep wandering off by itself. Them goats, though, 
Them goats, you'll find them out there all by themselves. But one thing I do want to share in closing is in Psalms. Let's go to Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We are the sheep and God is our shepherd. Why is it important for us to be amongst his flock so that we can have everything that the shepherd has promised to us so that we can have the protection so that we can be fed the right things so that he can lead us beside the still waters so that we can be protected from those who may try to come in and be predatorial against us because we are of value to the shepherd. The shepherd values us, and it is from that posture of value that he cares for us, that he tends to us, that he leads us, that he guides us. But if you're not a part of a shepherd's flock, then you become vulnerable and susceptible to being taken as prey. You become vulnerable and susceptible to being stolen and robbed. God is giving us an invitation and an opportunity to be numbered as a part of his flock. The question is, are we going to accept that invitation?